Welcome to part two of debunking Dr. Simone Gold, the founder of Frontline Doctors of America. In this talk that Simone is giving to a maskless, non-socially distanced crowd, she thought it was a good idea to still defend hydroxychloroquine as an effective treatment against COVID. She is very wrong about this, but let's go through her claims and debunk them one by one. The, the next big popular well-known lie was the maligning of this common, ordinary, cheap, safe medication called hydroxychloroquine. I really thought we were done with this, but here she is still in January refusing to back down from this unscientific claim. Those of you who've traveled abroad, who've taken mission trips, for example, or anybody in the military are quite familiar with this drug. Doctors would just give it out, you know, like candy. Just because a medication is commonly prescribed and is effective against parasites like malaria, that doesn't mean it's going to be effective against COVID. That's the central issue that she is completely missing here. All of a sudden we started hearing as doctors, even as doctors, that hydroxychloroquine is unsafe. You can't understand what's going on with the lies until you understand what an enormous lie this is. Well, Simone, the enormous lie that you're telling here is that hydroxychloroquine is effective against COVID. It's not, as we'll see in a bit. But that is one of the main reasons why it is dangerous to claim that it is effective because it's not. You can't promote an ineffective medicine when a pandemic is raging on. That is only going to cause confusion and more death. Promoting this drug that has not been proven to be effective against COVID is also dangerous because it creates a demand for the drug, and that takes it away from people who really need it, who take it for things that it's proven to be effective against, like malaria. My first patient, who I needed to give hydroxychloroquine and zinc to, I did it, and, and even knowing the kind of the controversy, I really didn't think twice about it. It, it. I don't know. It was fine. I gave it to her. I actually called her the next day. She was so much better. She herself got better within about 12 hours. In about 48 hours, she was essentially completely well. This completely matched what I had read in the scientific literature. I knew many doctors who had done this. I'd read many journal articles. And it, was com it, was, it was completely consistent. The word of a doctor or even several doctors is not good enough. You need randomized controlled trials in order to determine whether a drug is effective against a particular disease. We have those for hydroxychloroquine. Now, I'm not sure which studies Simone has been looking at, but if you read the literature, her experience is completely inconsistent with the data. Here's some of the latest studies assessing the effectiveness of hydroxychloroquine against COVID-19 patients and all of them found that it's not effective. I'll link all of these studies in the description below so you can check them out for yourself. So I just want to encourage anybody in their own personal life, when you face that little tyranny on a daily basis, you, you know, this is Florida, but you know, I hail from California and you can't go anywhere without a mask, except I do. I go without a mask as much as I possibly can. She's anti-mask too. Shocker. Should I take a moment? Are you all familiar with the Lancet, the controversy with that? Oh, uh, this is a good one. Okay. Yeah, it is an interesting one, but I doubt that she'll represent the story accurately. So sometime around April, I think, the Lancet published this study that concluded that hydroxychloroquine wasn't safe. This threw the world into a tizzy. Based on this article, the WHO stopped um, hydroxychloroquine trials across the world. The European Union stopped allowing hydroxychloroquine. That was the reason that the headlines trashed the president as, as calling it snake oil. Well, it wasn't the only reason, but hydroxychloroquine trials were resumed shortly after this paper was shown to be flawed. There was a group of independent doctors who looked at this data and said, there's no way you have 90,000 patients enrolled in a trial across five continents and nobody ever heard of this thing. It was just, it wasn't credible. So these independent doctors got together and they kind of forced it and they forced the issue. And the Lancet ended up retracting the study and there it is, she's misrepresenting the story. That is not what happened at all. This study was not even a clinical trial. It was a retrospective study, which means the researchers looked at data in a database and analyzed it in order to make their conclusions. What happened was that doctors realized that their hospital's data were being mentioned in this study. And that's where the problem came because those hospitals were not submitting their data to this database. The database is called Surgisphere. So doctors from these hospitals reached out to the researchers themselves and said, hey, we never submitted our data to this database. What's going on here? And so after realizing that this database, Surgisphere, 
was actually posting fraudulent data. The researchers themselves requested that the journal retract their paper. In fact, other articles that used Surgisphere data but had nothing to do with COVID began to be retracted at the same time because people were realizing that this database was not reliable. So that's what happened. This is an example of science correcting itself. This was not a conspiracy. This was not some grand plan to discredit hydroxychloroquine. No, because like I said, the hydroxychloroquine trials resumed shortly after this paper was retracted. And to this day, randomized controlled trials continue to show that this drug is not effective at treating COVID-19 patients. But I learned pretty early that the big fight was the fear. The big fight wasn't the virus, it was the fear. You know, I've heard that before, and not just with COVID-19. I remember it from a historical account of the 1918 influenza. Here are historical records from an article written in 2005 about the 1918 influenza. People from that pandemic 100 years ago repeatedly said things like, it is our duty to keep the people from fear. Worry kills more people than the pandemic. Fear kills more than the disease. There is no cause for panic or alarm. But as people heard these reassurances, they could see neighbors, friends, and spouses dying horrible deaths. In Philadelphia, bodies remained uncollected in homes for days until eventually open trucks and even horse-drawn carts were sent down city streets and people were told to bring out the dead. The bodies were stacked without coffins and buried in cemeteries in mass graves dug by steam shovels. And yet, despite all of this, people were told that fear kills more than the virus. Sound familiar? It's this denial, this downplaying of the virus that ironically makes it so much more dangerous because it allows people to be complacent and not care about it. So then the virus spreads to more and more people. And when it spreads to more and more people, that is when it's deadliest. So all we need to do really is just care a little and take action. Promoting a drug that has proven to not be effective against COVID goes directly against that goal. 100 years ago, Simone Gold would be saying the same things that she is saying now, and she would be on the wrong side of history. And today, again, she is going to be on the wrong side of history. That's going to do it for part two of this debunk of Simone Gold. Hydroxychloroquine is still not effective against COVID. Once again, thank you so much for watching. If you're sticking around for part three, that'll be coming up right next. But if you're not, then I do hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope you subscribe so that you can catch me next week where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you in a bit.